Happy Friday and welcome back to my Game Grid toy box. I've got Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey with me today and that means it's time for our next episode of Toy Box Tutorials. Before we get into this episode, I want to take a moment and let you know that there will not be an episode of Toy Box Tutorials for the next few weeks because I'm going to be taking some time off. The next episode of Toy Box Tutorials will air on Friday, June 10th. Because I'm going to be taking that time off, I want to finish the logic for this pinball game today so you can play it while I'm gone. Now this tutorial is going to be a little different from my usual tutorials because I'm not going to be teaching you how to use a specific creativa toy today. Instead I want to teach you how you might go about structuring a more complex toy box game like this one. Sometimes you may want to create a game that's divided up into multiple rounds that have a fixed amount of time, like the quarters of a football or basketball game, or the innings in a baseball game, and you might wonder how would you go about doing that. Well, one way to do it is to use a series of timers. You might have one timer for the duration of the entire game, and then additional timers for each round, and you can use those additional timers to control what happens at the end of each round, and that's what we're going to do here. So, as we get started, let me once again review the game flow for this game. The game's divided into two halves, and again, if you have not seen me play this in my video a couple of weeks ago, you might want to see this game in action and watch that video, because that's really helpful. Plus the fact that we're going to be building on what we've uh, already built logic-wise for the last two episodes. So. I definitely recommend reviewing that if you haven't seen it, but this game is divided into quarters. Each quarter lasts one minute, so it's a four minute game, and the player starts out on the green side of the field. The green side is active, the blue side will be inactive, and that means that only the bumpers on this side of the field will do anything. If you move the ball over here in that first quarter and try to hit it against these bumpers, nothing will happen. Now at the end of the first quarter, the green side becomes inactive and the blue side of the field becomes active, which means you cannot score any points on the green side of the field anymore. You have to move the ball over to the opposite side, here to the blue side, to continue scoring. When round two ends, the green side becomes active again and the blue side's disabled. And then at the end of the third round, it switches again. The blue side becomes active and the green side is disabled. So that's how the game flow works. So let's put down the creativa toys we need now to make this happen. And I'm going to explain this as best as I can each step of the way. And hopefully it'll show you what you need to do to structure your own toy box games where you might want to divide it up into rounds or quarters or whatever. So the first thing we're going to need is the challenge maker and I'm going to drop that over here so the player can run up the road right to the challenge maker. So that's the first thing we need. We also need a falling object generator and let's just drop this right over here for the moment. And we're going to need some additional toys. And I may miss a few here, but um, we'll come back as we need to. All right, we're going to need some timers. So this first timer, we'll drop this over here. This is going to be for the entire game. All right, so the entire four minute duration of the game. And then we're going to drop three additional timers over here. This will be for each round. So that'll be round one, round two, round three. And we don't really need a round four timer because we have that over here. The end of round four is the end of the game. So that is essentially our round four timer there. We already have the scoreboard that we dropped out last time. And we have counters. I just double check here. I don't believe we need another counter. If we do, I'll add it in, but it doesn't look like it. All right, we're going to need a text displayer. Because at the end of each quarter, I need to let the player know 
that it's the end of the quarter. And one of the ways I'm going to do that is with a text phrase, so we need this for that. Uh, we're going to need a logic gate here. Let's see, let's put one over here because we're going to need one with the timer. And I'll explain that in a little bit. And we're going to use one here. So I'm going to place this right here. And there's kind of a point to placing these where I am because hopefully the flow of this will help you understand what we're doing. Uh, and then, <laughs> let's see. Got that, we got that. We're going to need a locator, but we're not at that part of the drawer yet. And we're going to need a time delayer. So we're going to put this over here. And there's not too many more things we need. Uh, I think we already have a level starter. And I'm not sure we need that anyway, but yeah, here's our level starter. Or just so I know where that is. And then, as I said, we're going to need a locator. And we'll put the locator right on top of the remote controller, like we did with our other pinball game. And which way is that little blue dot facing? <laughs> It's facing that way. That's the way I want it to face. All right, good. Okay. Let's begin by setting up the properties on these things. So on the challenge maker, all of the defaults here are fine. I am going to set the challenge type to start on foot just to make it clear, just in case they're on a mount or in a vehicle, that we get them off of there, because I think that's important. For the overall game timer, on the properties for that, we're going to set the target time to be 240 seconds. That's four minutes. And the visible display will be off. Countdown is on. All right. There are no properties on the falling object generator, so I don't have to worry about that. This time delayer, we're going to set the delay time to be two seconds. And again, I'll explain that when we get to that point. For the text displayer, text duration to four, text style to banner. And now these three timers are going to control each of the quarters of the game. And so on the first timer, this will be for the first quarter. So on the properties for this, we'll set the target time to be 60. All right, and um, yeah, and then all of these are off. This will be the timer for round two. And so the properties for this, I'm going to set the timer to be 120. And again, we'll turn those properties off. And for the third quarter, this one gets set to 180 seconds, or 3 minutes, and again we turn those off. Alright, so these are going to control our time. And we need two other toys, because when the game switches at the end of each round, we need to let the player know. I'm going to play a sound effect, and I'm also going to display some text. But in case you're in the middle of the round and the player isn't sure which side they need to be on, we're going to use a couple of indicators up here. And for that, we're going to use a couple of 
color changing blocks. Find those in the blocks drawer. And we can we'll place one here. Place one here. All right, so those are all of the toys that we're going to need. So let's start with some of the easy things that you've seen set up before. We'll begin with the scoreboard. So on the challenge maker, we're going to do a new logic connection. On invites accepted, we'll come over to the scoreboard. And we set the properties for that on last episode. But on invites accepted, we're going to reset the scoreboard. On the challenge maker, a new logic connection. When the game is started, we're going to activate the scoreboard. And a new logic connection on the challenge maker when the game is ended. We'll remove the display. On the challenge maker, a new logic connection when the results are closed. We'll deactivate the scoreboard. And the last thing we need to do with the scoreboard is link the score results for the end. And there we are. Now, we have two scoreboards now in this toy box. We have one for this game, and we have one for the game that we had created last time. So we now have two scoreboards in here. Both of these are going to be competing with each other to be displayed. And what happens is, is when the player comes into the toy box, the score um, will automatically be displayed because the properties on these are set with visible display on. And you have to have that on if you want to display that thing at all. And so what you want to have happen then is when a player enters the toy box, whether it's player one or player two, we don't want to see those scoreboards until we actually play the game. So on our level starter, we're going to do a new logic connection on Catalyze. We want to remove each of the displays for the scoreboards. And this will handle player one entering the toy box. A new logic connection on Catalyze. On the level starter, we'll come over to this scoreboard and remove the display. All right. Now, once player two comes into this toy box, and this is really designed, this toy box, for a single player, but of course there's nothing to prevent two players from coming in here, then we need to be able to disable those things again because when player two comes in, it's automatically going to turn these displays on again. Why it does that, I do not know. <laughs> it's kind of goofy. But um, the level starter will have already been triggered when the toy box was loaded. So we need another stimulus to be able to turn those displays off. And for that, we're going to use a trigger area over top of the start pad. So if we go to our Creativa Toys drawer and we drop down the trigger area, on the trigger area we can do a new logic connection when this is exited by player 2, or you could do player any if you like. We will remove the display. And a new logic connection when exited by player two. Come over and remove the display on this one. All right. And so that way, when we begin the game, we're turning on 
the scoreboard for the particular game that we want to play. And it's usually a good idea to have the challenge maker turn off the other scoreboards in the game and make sure that its scoreboard is the only one visible. So on this challenge maker, a new logic connection, on invites accepted, we're going to go make sure that this scoreboard is off because these things have a habit of turning themselves on at weird times. So we want to make sure it's off and isn't going to cause a problem. And likewise, our new challenge maker here, a new logic connection on invites accepted. Make sure we turn that scoreboard off. Remove it from the display. That's what I mean by turning it off. We don't want to see it. All right, so that takes care of the scoreboard. Now we'll set up the game timer. So on the challenge maker, a new logic connection on invites accepted. And there's two things we want to do with this timer. The first one we want to do is we want to show the timer display. Of the four timers, this is the only one we want to see. The player needs to know when the game is over. And on the challenge maker, a new logic connection on invites accepted. And you've probably seen this before, but I can't connect another invites accepted to the same creativitoy. So that's why I dropped this logic gate out here. So we'll input into that. And then on that logic gate, we'll do a new logic connection on output. We'll come over to our timer and we're going to reset the timer. So those are the two things we want to do on invites accepted. On the challenge maker, a new logic connection. When it's started, we want to start the timer. On the challenge maker, a new logic connection. When the game is ended, we don't need to see this anymore. So we can hide the timer display. And I think that's it for the timer. Yeah. And then on the timer, a new logic connection. When the timer expires and the four minutes are up, we'll come back to the challenge maker and complete the game. So there's the basic structure of the overall game. And we've done this in other episodes, so there's nothing too revolutionary there. Let's go ahead and continue setting up some of the basic things. We'll do the falling object generator next. And so we'll come over to our falling object generator. We're going to use this to put the ball in to the field dynamically. So we're going to do a new locator connection. We're going to connect it up to this locator. We're using that for the camera. We'll also use that for the ball location. So when the game starts, that's where the ball will go. On the challenge maker, a new logic connection. And uh, let's do this on invites accepted so that the ball is there when the game starts. And we're going to use the soccer ball. And when the game is over, we should take the ball out. So a new logic connection when the game is ended. Go all the way to the bottom and remove all. So that puts the ball into the game and takes it out at the end. So far, so good. <clears throat> All right. On the challenge maker, we'll do a new locator connection. We're going to connect up to this locator over here. This is going to be players, the player's start position. We want to put them right on top of that remote controller. All right, and the other thing we want to do is at the end of the game, we want to make sure the player's taken out of the remote controller. So on the challenge maker, a new logic connection. When the game is ended, we'll come over to our remote controller. And for player one, 
we're going to force the exit, take them out of that mode. And the other thing we want to do too, just for cleanliness, <clears throat> just in case the player cancels out of the game or something, we'll do a new logic connection when the game is ended. We'll make sure we turn off our camera up here. Okay. And that takes care of a lot of the basics of the game. So the timer set up, the falling object generator, the locator on the remote controller, the scoreboard, and uh, now we're ready to start hooking up the whole point of this tutorial. <laughs> How do you divide the game up into rounds, or in our case, quarters? And we're going to use those three timers to do it. So there's three things the challenge maker needs to do to set up those three, uh, each of those three timers. So on the challenge maker, a new logic connection. On invites accepted, we want to reset each of these timers. So a new logic connection on invites accepted. We'll reset the round two timer. And we'll do the same thing with the round three timer. Okay. Now when the game is started, we want to start all three timers. So a new logic connection on the challenge maker on started. We'll start all three of these timers. Okay, and then the last thing we want to do is when the game is ended, we want to pause all of those timers. So on game ended, we don't want to let these things keep running. Because these are counting upward, and they'll continue to count until you tell them to stop. go. Okay, so that initializes all of those timers. We also need to initialize the playing field, because again, this side is going to be active as we start. This side is not. This side is going to be inactive. And so that's controlled by these logic gates that we set up last time. So on our challenge maker, we're going to do a new logic connection. And let's see, we'll do this on invites accepted. First thing I want to do is close both of these gates right out of, right when uh, the invites are accepted. So we'll close both of these. Yeah. Okay. And then on the challenge maker, a new logic connection on started. When the game starts, we want to open this first gate. The other one stays closed, so only this side of the field is active. When the ball hits one of these bumpers, it'll input into this gate. The gate will be open, and so it'll go and start scoring. These all come through this gate, but in round one, that gate is closed. So nothing will happen when the ball touches those bumpers. Now those gates control the logic, but we need to give the player some visual feedback as to which side of the field they need to play on. Because initially, the ball is going to be sitting here. 
And so that's what we're using these color changing blocks for, is to give the player a visual indicator of which side to play on. So <clears throat> for the color changing blocks, on the challenge maker, we're going to do a new logic connection. And uh, let me see here. On invites accepted, we're going to come to this color changing block and we're going to set it to green. Green for go. And on the challenge maker, a new logic connection. On invites accepted, we'll set the other color changing block to red. Red means stop. Don't go on this side. Go on that side. And at the end of the game, we want to put those back to their default gray color. So on the challenge maker, a new logic connection. When the game is ended, we'll set both of those back to their default color, which is dark gray. And that makes sense because neither side is active at that point. Okay, so that takes care of the color changing blocks at the end of the game and at the start of round one, or the first quarter. All right, so we've set up the timers, we've set up the color changing blocks, we've set up the logic gates for each side. All right, so this one again was set to 60 seconds. This one was 120, this is 180. So this one's gonna go off first. This is the timer for round one or the first quarter. So when this timer goes off, we need to do a number of things. I need to let the player know, and I wanna play a sound and display some text. We wanna switch the color changing blocks color we want to close this logic gate and open this one so that these bumpers can now score and these over here cannot. And so there's a number of things that timer needs to do. And so we'll take this one at a time. So on the timer, we'll do a new logic connection. When the timer is expired, first thing we'll do is come over to this logic gate and close it. And on this round one timer, new logic connection, when the timer expires, we'll come over to this logic gate and open it. All right. And then we need to let the player know. So a new logic connection when the timer is expired. We're going to come over to this color changing block and turn this one red. And when the timer expires, turn the other one green. Like that. <clears throat> and I also want to display a message and play a sound. And it's going to be the same message and the same sound effect for all three timers. So we're going to run all three of these timers through this logic gate to do that. So on this round one timer, we'll do a new logic connection. When the timer is expired, we'll input into this gate. And that'll just save us a few logic connections because I won't have to hook every one of these timers up to do these same couple of things. So on the logic gate here, a new logic connection on output. We're going to come over to our text displayer and scroll down to the survival modes category. And we're going to say proceed to the exit. That's the closest message I could find to indicate to the player that they need to leave the area they're currently in and move to the other one. And then we also want to play a sound. So on the logic gate, a new logic connection on output. Come over to our sound generator.
And in the general category, we're going to play the alarm. And the alarm is only going to sound one time. And to me, that isn't quite enough. I kind of like to hear it sound twice. Um, so that's why we have the time delayer in here. The sound is about two minutes or two seconds long. And so that's why this timer was set to two seconds earlier. So this logic gate is going to do a new logic connection on output. We're going to start this timer. And new logic connection when the delay is completed. We're going to go back to the sound effect generator and play that sound, same sound a second time. So under general, we're going to play alarm. And that is enough to get the player's attention. All right, so that is everything that the round one timer needs to do. All right. So again, this one goes off at the one minute mark. This one goes off at the two minute mark. And so for this timer, we're going to do a new logic connection. When the timer is expired, we're going to do the opposite of what the other one did. So we're going to close this logic gate now. And a new logic connection when that timer expires for round two, we're going to open up the original logic gate for the green side. And then we also need to update those color changing blocks. So a new logic connection on the timer when the timer is expired. We want to set this one back to green. And we want to set the other one to be red. So when the timer is expired, turn this one red. And then we also want to display the text message and play the alarm. So a new logic connection when the timer is expired, we just go input into this logic gate and we've already made the connections to display the text and play the sound. So that's all we need to do now with the round two timer. Now at the 182nd mark, the round three timer goes off. And this one needs to do exactly the same thing that the round one timer did. So on this one, we do a new logic connection when the timer's expired. <laughs> Come over to this logic gate and close it. And open up the other logic gate for the blue side. And a new logic connection when the timer is expired. Update the color changing blocks, so that one becomes red. The blue side becomes green. And then we want to display our text message and play our alarm. And we do that by inputting again into that gate. All right, so those are the timers for the rounds, and that's how you set up or divide your game into rounds, or in our case, quarters. We have four quarters, four rounds. This one controls round one. This one controls the end of round two. That one controls the end of round three. And at the end of round four, this one connects to here to complete the game. So that's how we, st we have structured our game. And I believe that's just about everything. So it's pretty straightforward. And again, I think I already connected this to the challenge maker to put that back to dark gray. Yeah, I've got two connections there. So that's good. And let me just double check my notes here. I believe I have everything all set up. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I don't want to mess you guys up. Okay. I've got these hooked up. 
to the challenge maker. This is on invites accepted, so yeah, I'm missing something here. So at the end of the game, we want to make sure we close both of those gates. So on the challenge maker, a new logic connection on game ended. We want to make sure we close that gate. The other one will already be closed. It's probably a good idea, though, to close that anyway, just in case the player aborts the game in the middle of the other round. So on game ended. Let's go ahead and close that one, too. And we already paused the timers. I remember doing that. And everything else is good. And that's it for this pinball game. I hope you'll enjoy it. When I return from my break, we'll begin looking at a new game, and I'll show you another example of how to use the remote controller. Until then, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you're continuing to enjoy this series of tutorials. If so, please hit the like button and leave a comment to let me know. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, just click my photo in the lower right corner, and then you'll never miss an episode. That's all for me today. Take care.